So I have to be completely honest, this feels more like a reintroduction, a reacquaintance, if you will, instead of an actual introduction, because we do know you so well here in Atlanta. But for you, I think you, the, the point of all of this is that you get on the plane and you come to Atlanta and you said, not very often in the NFL, do you get the opportunity to come home? For you, as you were pulling into Mercedes-Benz Stadium today, coming back into this locker room, what, what was the feeling that kind of overcame you? You know, it's uh, it really funny, Tori. You know, it's not the feelings that overcome me, it's really the people that you're with. And seeing what it did to my family, seeing what it did to my wife, and my parents, and just my kids, and everybody coming back into the stadium, and really just meaning so much to those guys was probably the most important part for me. Um, for me, it was a feeling of coming home to get something accomplished that you want to get accomplished for a long time. For the people of Atlanta, for the people that work here, for the familiar faces, I was so excited to walk into the stadium for that, that I almost had this kind of game day-like feel where it became like a serious, more, let's go get them type of a deal, you know? And then it was nice to look around and see everybody's love excitement and I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. It's really interesting because it's only been three seasons since you've been here and but there has been so much change happening here. And, and the team that you're about to come in and meet and coach, it's drastically different than the one that you knew in 2020. What made you so excited to work with and coach and lead this team? You know, people that work here has done such a good job. You know, whether it's been right from the top, right from Mr. Blank to Rich McKay to Greg Beatles, all the way to Terry Fontenot and his crew. And what they've done building the roster and building the team just made it really exciting. And when you looked at it across the board, you thought, what a team to go back to, what a time to go back, um, what a great time to be a part of this community, what a great time to be a part of what they can do and how far we can go. And you just got so excited, right? Let's go build on it. Let's go form this culture how we want it. Let's go get our football character right. Let's go put our pillars in place. And let's go win a championship, right? And then when you come back and you get that feel and you see some familiar faces, you see some new pieces, some things that they added, some people that's come in place that's been a part of this, you just get excited. And that exciting feeling to lead this team, to lead this organization, to be back into this community again, something that's very special. What's changed for you in the three seasons since you've been in Atlanta? Uh, I'd have to say a lot, you know, just a learning experience. The people in LA, LA were just great to me. And all of the things that I've learned from ownership down, you know, the, the Cronkies were just amazing. To see the relationship with Sean McVay, to see how much it just went through the building throughout the, the, whole, the whole process with Les Snead, Tony Pastor, Kevin Demoff, all of the great people that I was able to reacquaint with or meet again or meet. Mm -hmm. um, that whole feeling, then being to go out there and win a championship with those people, not always being easy, having to go through the whole process of winning a championship, going through a little bit of a struggle, coming back, getting hot at the right time and winning it, right? Letting the confetti fall around you. That's what a great feeling that was. Then the next year, and you get a chance to struggle and go through it again. And then you get a chance to come back and rebuild it. And you get a chance to follow all the core beliefs that you have in your life in order to build that thing up to get back to the playoffs. And that's what we did this year before I got a chance to come back and meet you again. And what a lovely experience, what a great time I had out there, but it also helped me develop, helped me get better. It made my process better. It made the whole thing better for all of us and to get for this time for us to get back together, right? Things happen for a reason. Like you separate and you get back together and it just makes it all just that much fonder. You know, you're talking about evolution and you were 32 years old the first time that you became a head coach and here we are well over a decade later not to date you or anything like sure. that but when you think back to kind of that that guy then that 32 year old who had the first opportunity to be a head coach and now where you are in your life and your career how has your coaching philosophy evolved since those days you know, when you're 32 years old and you get in charge of a franchise you have all the answers right you know everything you know getting wiser getting smarter or getting old, as you kind of told me in a nice way. <laughs> now I'm 47 and I have a wife, have three beautiful children. Um, I know how to empower more people. I don't need to be the smartest person in the room. Let some people go ahead and tell you what they think, get their thoughts, be a better listener, be a better communicator, make it ongoing, make it honest, make it open. You do all of those things now, right? You're a little bit slower in your process, but you trust your process. 
And when you trust your process, you'll get the results that you want. And I truly believe that will help me right now in the spot that I'm at in life, in the spot that I'm in with you guys. And being reunited with you guys is probably one of the better feelings in the world. There's something that, you know, while I was prepping for this interview, and I actually went back and listened to some of our old interviews and <laughs> back in like 2020 when we were on Zoom calls and everything. And something that came up even then was this whole idea of the way that you look at the players around you and the, and the guys that you're coaching and teaching and leading. And something that you've said time and time again, whether it was press conferences back then or even in like podcast in the last few years, is you said that the players that you're around help you as much, if not more, than you ever help them. What, is that, what does that mean to you? Know, you? you know, Tori, like, that's so true. And it, it, it uh, resonates with me so well. And it's funny that you called me out on that because you really, when you get in those press crimes, you just speak from the heart and you talk about your players. But for me, you know, they don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. And if you really invest in your players and you become that confidant for the guys and you get, you get with those guys, you give them that mentorship and you give them those things, they give you so much more back, right? They will run through a wall for you. And, and I've, been, I've been fortunate enough to be around some great players and some great players that I left here. You're talking about Grady Jarry, you're talking about Jake Matthews, you're talking about some of the guys you, you're just excited to be around yeah. again. Th those guys care about football. They care about life. They care about just all of the things that we invest in, all of the people that we invest in. And it, it will never change, right? Those guys give you just as much as you give them. And if you invest into those guys and you really care about those guys, you make those things work in the best way. You went on the Pivot podcast in February 2022 <laughs> after winning the Super Bowl with the Rams. And you said something then that I thought was just so great to have this moment with you now as the Atlanta Falcons head coach. You said, I'm gonna lead a team at some point and I'm gonna be me. When you said, I'm gonna be me, what did that mean then? And how does that relate to what it means now? You know, everybody knows me, especially in this building. You know, I'm gonna be fun. You know, I'm gonna bring football character, you know, talking about being accountable, talking about being disciplined, talking about being having coachability, talking about having dependability. All of those words are really what builds me is the fabric of my whole being when it comes to culture, right? And I'm gonna be me at the highest level in the, in the biggest moments. And I just, I just, I just can't wait to and just embrace the team and get everybody to go and get on that, that metric that we just feel like is what builds us. And when I said that in the pivot, I didn't know when it was gonna happen. I didn't know who it was gonna be. I didn't know where it was gonna be. And just so happens, you get a chance to come back home and do it all you guys in this room, in this building that I was a part of when it was built, that I was able to start in. Uh, what a special moment for us. Talk about coming home, and um, I, I think we have to talk about the city of Atlanta and the culture of Atlanta. And what does it mean to you to to re to, to kind of return to this city that was your home sure. for a long time? Uh, the first thing you had to talk about was you know being the first black coach in the history of the Atlanta Falcons without an interim tag. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a pretty unique experience, and I thought that was a, it meant a lot not just to me to the coaches after me, the coaches before me, um, to the present day coaches. It just meant so much, particularly in this city, right? The, 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 the epicenter of black history, the epicenter of just pride. And then you think about all the things that Arthur Blank has done for the city and how much he cares about the city, how much he's invested into the city and how much he made us all invest when we were here, right? I remember yesterday just painting houses, mm -hmm. right? And some of our community events. And all of those things, right? And then coming back to the city at the right time, at the right moment for myself, for my family, for the organization, for the team, I just think is a really special moment. I think it's a really special time in history. I just can't wait to get going. Yeah. Uh, the, the staff that you've built around you, that's been something that we've been talking about for weeks now. Is, sure. is who, who's Raheem bringing in here? Who, who's going to surround him? What can you tell me about this staff that you've put together and what excites you about this group of men? We still got some work to do, mm -hmm. but it is so exciting when we talk about these guys. You're talking about confidants, mm -hmm. you're talking about mentors, you're talking about experts at their position, you're talking about people that can disagree but not be disagreeable, right? And you're yeah. talking about bringing all these people around your players and bringing all these people around our players and what we want them to do and how we want them to do it. And 
when I think about the staff that we put together, when I think about some of the guys we're able to retain from the old staff and how they fit into what we want to do and how we want to go about our business, whether you're talking about Letford and Petrie, or you're talking about some of the new guys we're bringing, like an Ike Hilliard or a Jimmy Lake, or you're talking about some of the really special people, like a Zach Robinson who comes into the stadium, they fit that mold, they fit the things that we talk about, they fit those adjectives so well that I just can't wait to get those guys with these players and make the best come out of all these guys so we can go out there and make the best winning product on the field and off the field that we could possibly have. Just to kind of wrap things up, there's something that in every conversation, whether it's nationally or even conversations that I feel like with I have with friends in the business or whatever, the word timing comes up a lot when we're talking about Raheem Morris. <laughs> and uh, uh, here's what I mean by that. There have been questions about why it took well over a decade for you to be a head coach again. There have been and here we sit in 2024, and you're not a head coach for a team that you interviewed with three seasons ago. Sure. A team that you held an interim head coach title for. So all of this has timing. You know, there's always this, this line of timing in, in conversations around you, the person, the coach. For you, what can you say about what you've learned about the importance of timing? You know, it's not even timing, really. I think we kind of, kind of got spoiled in this coaching business. Mm -hmm. And we expect things to happen immediately and fast and at your pace that you think it should happen. But everything happens for a reason, right? You get a chance to come here and you get a chance to be the interim head coach. You get a chance to lead in a not so uh, perfect world setting, right? The world's going through a crisis. We're going through COVID together and you get a chance to lead your way through it. And you get a chance to go away and just get better and keep developing and be around other people, right? Do your best to, to support, to help, you know, to follow, right? And that's how you become a better leader, right? Learning how to learn those roles and what your role is going to be and how you're going to handle those things. So I think all those things happen with time. I think all those things happen in the right timing for everybody. And I think the most important about it, thing about it is it's always a people first business. And you don't get the opportunity to come back be with people if you treat people the wrong way. And I pride myself on treating people the right way at all times. And I think that's the things that makes it the best for me, no matter how long it took, right? I couldn't work in anybody else's time frame. I had to work within my own. It had to be the right place. It had to be the right timing. It had to be the right people. And what better place than to come back home to Atlanta and be with the people that you see around right now. Mm -hmm. And I'll let you have the last word on this. What can fans expect from the Atlanta Falcons in 2024. You know, make no mistake about it. There's only one team at the end of every season that's ever gonna be happy. And I've been fortunate at this young age of 47, mm -hmm. now that you call me out old, <laughs> to win it twice. Yeah. And I've been fortunate enough to be able to go to a championship with this franchise and get that ultimate letdown. And there is no bigger thought in my head than to watch Arthur Blank hold up a Lombardi trophy in front of this city, this town, these people, the people that work with us. I can't imagine that. And we're gonna make it happen. That's what they can expect. That's great, I love it. And can I just be one of many who welcome you back to Atlanta? <laughs> Tori, I am uh, extremely excited to be back. And it's not just because we got the sweetest uniforms in the league. <laughs> it's because of the people that are here. It's the people I'm coming back to. It's the players that I'm coming back to. The people within the buildings. It's the whole A and B group. Whether we're talking about Mount Sky, we are we talking about the football team, we're talking about the soccer team, all the venues that we're a part of. Um, we got a responsibility to uphold. And I, and I got a lot of faith in the people around here that. We're gonna uphold those things. Fantastic. Awesome. I love it. This is great. Sweet. Now you guys go cut that up and make me look sweet. <laughs> <laughs>